So, um, chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, how many know, how many remember that Saul was the first king of Israel? A man named Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Well, he, he began to disobey God. He began to sin against God. And verse 30 of chapter 15, if you see there, he says, I have sinned. So this was a one of a uh, pattern now of sin. But please, he said, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. I, I gave you that. I want you to notice that verse, and we're going to come back to it. So he said, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people. Now we go down to the very last sentence of chapter 15. And it says, the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. So God, God's heart was grieved because Saul started out so good, but he turned against God. Now chapter 16, it said, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Uh, Saul had started off being a mighty king of Israel. And Samuel is the one that had anointed him. And But God says to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? He said, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons, to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. So he doesn't tell him which of the eight sons is going to be the king. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab, the oldest of Jesse's eight sons. And he thought to himself, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me. Surely the future king stands before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance. Do not judge based on his appearance or his height. So we're assuming he was very handsome and that he was tall. And that's unusual for a Jew. So he says, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy, meaning he had kind of uh, some sunburn, uh, with a fine appearance and handsome features. Just by the way, he's good looking too. But that's not why he's chosen. There the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He's the one. Amen. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. 
And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And then Samuel went to Ramah. So we, I want you to understand that uh, he was the eighth, the youngest of eight sons, and uh, he was a teenager. More than likely, he was a teen. And so we're going to sing a song about him.
Okay, that, I, I want you to go to the, court, the scripture. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Okay, Th this is a scripture that um, I want to just look at first. And now your kingdom, saying it to Saul, will not endure. The Lord has sought a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Yes. So that's the part. It says that he's looked for a man after his own heart. And, and we saw in, in the chapter that, that David, um, God looked at his heart. God looks at the heart. How many understand? <laughs> if God doesn't care about the outward appearance. He cares about the inside. Amen. Yeah, I want to leave that one up. Thank you. Yeah, we just close the door. Amen. Praise God. So, so we can imagine that David had scriptures. Uh, the the first part of the Bible called the Torah. Um, some of the history, whatever. We we can imagine that he he meditated on scripture. He spent time in prayer. Uh, he probably came to believe in God as a young, as a child. Uh, if you go to the very middle of your Bible, keep Samuel there. The very, very middle of the Bible, what do you find? If you just cut it in half. Psalms. Yes. Okay? So most of these Psalms were written by David. And, and they, they were prayers. They were songs. They were poems that he quoted, he wrote down about his relationship with God. So, so David was a man who sought God, who sought his heart. A man after his heart. A, a man who honored God. A man who loved God. Yes. Here he is a teenager, but he's the greatest man in, in Israel. God, it said that he looked throughout Israel to find a man that could be king. And he found a man that was a teenager to be king of Israel. Now I imagine there were some old, older men that, that were godly men, but they had to be someone that could lead the army too. Because the king was also the kind of, uh, I'm not sure if he was the commander, but he went to war. With, with the army. So, so we'll go back to chapter uh, 16 and 17 of Samuel, of 1 Samuel. And so we ended with that they picked, God picked this youngest of, of the eight, and he rejected the first seven, meaning they did not have a heart. For God, they didn't have a heart that sought God, that loved God, and um, and so we'll understand. Look at verse uh, again, verse thirteen. And so they anoint Samuel, anointed in front of his brothers. He anointed David with oil, and when he anointed him, the Spirit of God came upon David in power. It said. Now, if you will look at chapter 16, verse 18, we see that someone came into contact with David after that time. And so it was one of Saul's servants. And so we know that David was not yet crowned king. He was anointed king, but he was not crowned king for around 15 more years. So we won't be able to tell that whole story today. But verse 18, one of the servants said, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. So he was a musician. He wrote songs, he sang. But he was a brave man. A brave man and a warrior. So we see the effect. David had a heart for God. And God put his spirit on this man. This was a human man. But when God saw his heart in David, he put his spirit on David. Yes. 
when he saw his heart in David, he put his spirit Amen. on David. Amen? Amen. And so the, the next thing we're going to look at is chapter 17, where the Israelite army is at war with the Philistines. But all of the Israelite soldiers are, are totally petrified to, to fight. And we'll see why. So in chapter 17, the Philistines, a wicked, wicked, wicked people on the earth at that time that defied God, that, that lived evil, wicked lives, and who God's wrath was, they were under God's wrath at this time. How many understand? You don't want to be under God's wrath. Right. Right. Amen? Right. Amen? You want to get your heart right with God. Yes. Amen? Yes. I need an amen. Amen. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Succa in Judah. So they came into, the, into Israel. They pitched camp. They, they had the upper hand. Uh, in verse 2, Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah, drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, how many have heard this story? A thousand times. <laughs> how many know we, get, we need to hear it at least once a year? Amen, or more. <laughs> this champion named Goliath was, was the, the epitome of evil. It, it was like the devil controlled this giant yes. who was from Gath. He came out of the Philistine camp. The devil got into the human race uh, and somehow perverted the human race. This man was nine feet tall and nine inches. And Miss Brandy's going to demonstrate how tall he was. This man was nine feet and nine inches tall. And so we want you to see how, how tall he was. And were 
dismayed and terrified. Now verses 12, uh, I'm going to skip over uh, to a morning, verse 20. Early in the morning of one day, David left the flock with a shepherd, his flock, his father's flock, loaded up and set out as his father had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines, facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath the Philistine champion from Gath stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. And when the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. So we can see that there is no one willing to face Goliath. Everyone is petrified of this giant. Now the Israelites had been saying, the Israelites were trying to get some get someone to have the courage. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. They were challenging each other. Do you see what this man is doing? And then they bribe, trying to bribe one person. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. And so David had interest because he wanted to kill the giant. David asked the men standing near, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen. Amen. I, I want us to understand, please look at that verse. I want us to understand that God's heart is for his own honor. Amen. Amen. If you want to know what God loves, what he wants, is he wants to be honored as God. Amen. Amen. He wants to be glorified as God. Amen? Yes. Why? Because he is. Yes. And because he's the only hope of mankind. Right. And so when when God looked at David's heart and saw that he had a heart like his, he had a heart that wanted to honor God. Amen. Amen. There was so much dishonor of God. Saul was dishonoring God. Yes. All the Philistines right. were dishonoring God. Right. All the peoples of the earth were dishonoring God. And look at David's heart. Because God's, God is not being honored. Right. Who is this uncircum... Who does he think he is? Amen. Who does he think? Come on, y'all. That's right. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Right. That he should defy the armies of the living God. How many can see something going on in David? Right, right there. So he has seen this king, and he's seen that not one man of Israel would go to fight. And so they repeated to him what they had been saying, and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. When his brother, Eliab, he was one of the soldiers, David's oldest brother heard him speaking with the men, he turned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart, look at the word, calling him a, having a wicked heart. How wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. He was there when his brother was anointed to be the next king. 
But David was always out in the sheep with the sheep. Yes. And he still had this terrible disdain for her, his youngest brother. And this was an extreme put down of David. And David says, now what have I done? How many understand David's not going to back down? Amen. He, his oldest brother, firstborn of the family, he's not going to back down for him. Now what have I done? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the matter. And the man answered him as before, what David, and what David said was overheard and reported to Saul. And Saul sent for him. Here's someone willing to go fight. Amen. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, what is Saul's opinion of him? You are not able to go. You cannot go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a, what does it say? You are only a, you are only a boy. And he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. He would not let one sheep be lost. Of his, he was so loyal to his father. He was so dependable to his earthly father. And when I, it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Amen. Because he has defied the armies of the living God. How many can understand that David couldn't stand the dishonor of God? Praise God. David couldn't put up with it. Amen. He couldn't put up with a lion or a bear stealing one of the sheep. And surely he couldn't put up with this giant defying the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of his of this Philistine. So let me understand that the power of God was on him. Amen. That an ordinary person couldn't do this. Right. But he, when he was anointed, when the Spirit of God came on him in power, this person said, I know this man. He's a brave man and he's a warrior. He had not fought any battle yet, but they probably heard about the lion and the bear. And so Dave, so Saul says, go and the Lord be with you. Amen. David was the only hope. There was not one other man that would go fight him. Saul, then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. So we know that he used the he used the slingshot to probably kill small animals, probably kill wolves. I don't know what else there would have been, but uh, that was his only weapon he had was a slingshot with five smooth stones. So David said to the Philistine, "You come against me with sword and spear and javelin." He had 
a javelin that was, his spear staff was like a weaver's rod. It weighed 600 shekels. Um, its iron point weighed 600 shekels. He said, you come against me with this giant sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defined. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. 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 I want you to understand the man's heart for God's honor. Yes. How many can get it a little bit? Amen. Amen. That God will honor those that honor him. God is jealous for his own honor. The whole world defies him. And you can't get any help from a God you defy. He's God and we are people. Without him we have no hope whatsoever. So God is jealous for his own honor. How many remember when Jesus went into the temple? When the people were buying and selling sacrifices and making the temple of God like a store, yeah. like a marketplace. And Jesus went in and he turned over all the tables. Yeah. 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 And he ran out all the people that were exchanging right. Right. money and animals and all this stuff. Yeah. And he said, how dare you make my father's house a marketplace? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I want you to understand that is the kind of person God puts his spirit on. Right. Come on, God. Right. That is zealous. It is that the Bible says that Jesus, the Messiah, would be zealous for God's honor. Amen. Amen. David was zealous for God's honor. Amen. It didn't matter who he had to come against. It didn't matter who was coming against him. How many know that God was going to deliver David? Right. Yes. Yeah. Who, who does God deliver? <laughs> Amen? Those that have a heart for his honor. I mean, said, when the lion came and the bear came. <sighs> Amen. Amen. This day the Lord will hand you over to me. And I'll strike you down and cut off your head. I'm sure it took both hands to cut off his head. Because he had to hold a giant sword. So it says, the whole world will know there's a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that he's not by sword or spear. The Philistines wouldn't let the Israelites have any swords or spears. It's a long story. They didn't have weapons. They let the Philistines get that over on them. But David said, it's not, right. it's not by sword or spear That's right. that the Lord right. saves. No. For the battle is the Lord's. Amen. And he will give all of you into our hands. Amen. Because it was time was up for the Philistines. So you say, how could true believers in God kill people? Because in that day, it was God's way of bringing judgment on his enemies. How many understand that God's wrath is going to come when God gets good and ready? He's very, very patient. He's very, very long-suffering. But he's going to judge and he's going to punish all that dishonor him. How many people today that I better stop dishonoring God? I better stop. Come on. Who are you to think that you should dishonor God? Right. Who do you think you are? That you should keep doing what you're doing? Right, right. How dare you? Yeah. How dare you keep dishonoring God? Right. Come on. Right. Come on. How dare you continue right. sinning right. against God? How, how dare you not serve God? Come on, right. God. Right. Come on. Amen. 
knows who's out for his honor. He knows who's playing games. Come on, some people in here are still playing games. Some people in here are still playing games with God. You're not all out for his honor. You're out for the world. You're out for all the junk. You're, you want what the devil wants to give you. That's, you see how that dishonors God? That totally dishonors God. For you to want the things of the world, how does that dishonor God? Do you see? Do you see when you run after this and run after this? You want that more than God. That dishonors God. When you want your movies, come on. When you want your, all your social media, when you want all your sports, come on, you want all these things. Come on, y'all. You want, you want your vehicles. You want your motorcycles. Come on, it's anything. You want, you want, you want, you want. You're dishonoring God. Please help me. Just, you want to keep hanging with the same people? Come on, you know they're not right. And you keep hanging with them. That dishonors God. Let me understand. I'm telling you, you're going to have a day of reckoning. Stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. 
the stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. The Philistine was fearful and yet he was proud. Oh, yes, yes. And he really didn't move as fast as he needed to because he didn't close the front. What's it called? The part of his armor right. that covered up his forehead. He didn't close it. How many, how many know that God held that stone to go to the one spot Amen. on Goliath's head? Amen. Do you think God can take a stone? <laughs> Amen? Amen. A man under his anointing and power and killed Goliath. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the scabbard, and he killed him. He cut off his head with a sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Amen. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Elkon. Elkon. Their dead were strewn along the road, and when the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put the Philistines' weapon in his own tent. As Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? He already knew whose son he was. But he could not believe David's power. He said, as surely as you live, O king, I don't know. Find out whose son. It's got to be somebody different. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with David. David still had the head in his hands. He's holding the head of the giant when he comes to Saul. Whose son are you, young man? I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. Just a lowly shepherd boy. But he had a heart for God and God's honor. God put his power on him. He filled David with his power. What did God need? He told Saul because he didn't have a heart for God's honor. He had a heart for his own honor. He said, your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. Amen. God's heart is about his honor. And appointed him leader of his people. Because Saul did not keep the Lord's command. So the world we live in, there's almost no leaders. There's no, almost no one that stands for God's honor. Nobody has the courage. Almost nobody. Nobody has the power to be a leader in this world. Because they're not all about God's honor. What did David honor in his life? Time with God. Time on his face before yeah. God. Yeah. Time meditating on God's word. Right. 
You, you can't meditate on... Look, look how messed up my Bible is. Amen. I have to put white duct tape. That was all I could find to hold it together. But it, it's a good illustration. Amen. I got saved and I started studying the Bible every day. Amen. And you can't study the Bible and not understand. I mean, if you're a Christian, if you come to Christ, you study His Word and you meditate and you pray. God's honor is all you care about. Amen. God's honor is all you care about. You can't do the things you've been doing. Come on, you. You can't, you can't keep dishonoring God. No, you can't. No, because God puts a spirit in you. Yes, yes. And all along the way, He gives you Himself. Yes. Spirit of the living God. Move yes. now at me. Try, try, I got saved and I was in the Word every day. And God was looking for someone in our church that would win the young families. There's, there's a generation, the age of me and Miss Geraldine and my husband, and none of their children were saved. And so they lost a whole generation. And one day I was in the house. God said, would you open your house every Sunday and win these young couples back to me? Well, that's the first call. First time God spoke since I got saved. And over and over and over and over. He never stops calling me. He, he's just looking for somebody that will be all out for his honor. Amen. Amen. And will make a fool of himself if necessary for God to be honored. All right. Yes. Don't yes. care what anyone thinks. Right. Except what he thinks. Right. Amen. Amen. And on and on and on. He called me. He kept calling me. I kept yes. serving and serving. And one day he called me to preach. I need you to preach in a way that honors me. Amen. And I got anointed with oil. I, I was ordained in my denomination in 2005. I, I, I'm, I'm very low on the totem pole. But I'm all about God's honor. I'm, I'm, I'm totally against dishonoring God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. Whatever you pursue, besides God, dishonors Him. I'm innocent. Whatever you pursue without, well, you pursue that's not from God, that dishonors Him. Right. And you keep going every day, dishonoring Him, dishonoring Him. You know, that upsets me. Yeah. Because it's my God you're dishonoring. Right. You're dishonoring my God. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. And so I, I wonder if some people will ever start on your God. And I believe they will. Yeah. I believe everybody in here. Come on. Amen. I believe everyone in here. I want God to see a heart that honors Him, that loves His Word, that lives for Him, that I'm tired. I'm tired of dishonoring God. I'm sick of it. Yeah. That my life is used for the devil's glory, not God's glory. Yeah. See, what happens right now is the blind lead the blind. Last week we said, be the one. We sang a song, will you be the one to answer to his call? Will you stand when those around you fall? Will you be the one to take his life into a dying world? 
I don't see much excitement about that. From last Sunday, everybody stood. But I want to see action. I want to see action. I want to find out that these people are spending time with God, are getting right with God, and are on their knees. Blind leading the blind. 
Bible says that the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall into the ditch. So we got to decide. We, we have to decide today. Yes. I think we decide every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Maybe if we decide every Sunday, one of the Sundays we will actually decide. Amen. Amen. Let me say I'm tired of dishonoring God with my life. Raise your hand. Amen. I'm tired of dishonoring. Amen. I'm tired. How many know it's no fun? No. no. At first it might seem like fun. Right. It's no fun. No, it's not. You cannot honor yourself if you don't honor God. You cannot have any respect for yourself. You do not honor God. You can't really respect yourself. Oh Lord Jesus, I praise you this morning. I praise you this morning. That there was a man. There was a man in Israel. He was 15 years old or so. He was a boy. He was not even a man yet, but he was but God called him a man. So that God sought a man that had a heart. Like his that had a heart for God. That had a heart for God's honor. And he couldn't find a man in his late teens, a man in his 20s, a man in his 30s. He had to go for a man that was around 15 years old. Oh my. He found a leader. He found someone. The entire army followed David's lead. 